The Black Eagles hail from the Edestrian Empire, known for their talent in using reason magic and their mastery over the axe. The Black Eagles house is led by the future Empress, Edelgard, and is accompanied by an array of different students who all come together under one house to learn from you, the Professor, if this is the house that you decided to choose. Hello, my name is JAIK, and like I promised, here are what I think are some of the best classes for your students when playing through Fire Emblem Three Houses. Keep in mind that these are at best suggestions, so if you're dead set on doing a priest-only run, then I'm not here to stop you. In fact, I encourage experimenting. Use this video if you're lacking inspiration, need ideas, or if the class system seems incredibly overwhelming. And so, without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off, we have Edelgard, whose personal ability is Imperial Lineage, which multiplies experience earned by 1.2 times. She also has the Minor Crest of Saros, which sometimes raises might when using combat arts. The first character progression line that I want to talk about is the Noble, into Fighter, into Brigand, into Warrior, into Armored Lord, and finally into Empress. Realistically, no matter how you get there, Empress, her personal class, is going to be the final class that you're most likely going to end up in. However, because it's the last class that you'll realistically end up in, I'm going to be talking about different ways that you can get into the Empress class. The first and perhaps the most common line is the Warrior line that I think most people will take Edelgard down into. Being proficient in axes and her starting with an axe, it's not a far cry to think that most players will turn her into a fighter, into brigand, into warrior. Her second class, Noble, into Fighter, into Brigand, into Wyvern Rider, and finally into Wyvern Lord, is another class line that is worth consideration if you want to make her Daenerys from Game of Thrones by making her ride a dragon. It gets her extra movement that you'll most likely just end up losing once you get into her personal class, and I personally think this is her best class as armored movement feels really bad for a house that gets a ton of movement upon their master class promotion. So, what you can do is you can stay Empress while your characters are slowly working towards their master class and swap to Wyvern Lord when a good chunk of your team is caught up. Her third class line, Noble into Myrmidon, into Lord, into Swordmaster, and finally into Mortal Savant. And while realistically you won't get into the Mortal Savant class, it's something that you can consider if you're using Edelgard heavily. Mortal Savant can make use of both her proficiencies in Sword and a budding talent in Reason Magic, making Edelgard a decent Mortal Savant, believe it or not. Her fourth option, Noble into Soldier, into Arbor Knight, into Fortress Knight, is another thing that you can consider if you already know that you're doomed to be in an armored class. Then, you know, if you know you're doomed, then why not just make her a Fortress Knight to start with before going down into the Armored Lord class? I mean, it's actually not the worst idea ever. And finally, you can go Noble into Monk, into Mage, into Warlock, and finally ending in Mortal Savant. Otherwise, you can go all in on her budding talent in Reason Magic and get an additive bonus to her 45% growth rate to her magic stat. But this, in my opinion, isn't recommended, but at the end of the day, she's going to be an Armored Lore Sash Empress and how you get there isn't really going to be that big of a deal in the big picture of things. The most you're going to be optimizing is skills, and whatever you pick up on Edelgard, she can make use of it. The next character we're going to be talking about is the right hand man to Edelgard herself, Hubert, who rocks the personal ability Officer Duty, which grants him plus 5 might when using gambits. Hubert does not have a crest. There are two main lines that you want to consider when using Hubert. The first is Noble into Monk, into Mage, into Warlock, and finally into Dark Knight. The second one is Noble into Monk, into Dark Mage, into Dark Bishop, and finally ending in Dark Knight. Hubert is a character that just really wants to be a mage. With a 55% growth in magic and only a 30% growth in strength, and with a base that already leans towards a magic stat, it's best that Hubert goes down a mage class. While the end class, Dark Knight, will always be the same, if you go down Dark Mage class, you will lose out on the charm growth that Mage could provide. And for someone like Hubert who wants a decent to high charm stat to make use of his ability, Officer Duty, it's recommended that you keep him in the Mage class opposed to the Dark Mage class. But if you do want to go into the Dark Mage, you get double the uses from your Dark Magic, so if you find yourself using Hubert a lot, and you see yourself running into a lot of problems with his magic uses, then Dark Mage into Dark Bishop is a worthy consideration. 
The next character we're going to be talking about is Bernadetta, who has the minor crest of Indec, which occasionally allows weapon attacks to strike twice. She also has the personal ability, Persecution Complex, which grants attack plus 5 when unit is not at full HP. With Bernadetta, I think most people will take her down this first class progression line, which is Noble, into Fighter, into Archer, into Sniper, and finally ending in Bow Knight. The Archer class seems to be the canon class that Bernadetta wants to be in, and her ending in the Bow Knight class seems to be pretty canon as she has proficiencies in both bows and lances while having a budding talent in writing. If this doesn't scream, please turn me into a Bow Knight, I don't know what is. Her personal ability is also relatively easy to proc and use, and it looks like her stats are really balanced around the fact that you're going to be wanting to abuse Persecution Complex as much as you can when using her. In combination with her high dexterity stat, a killer bow, and huge ranges, Bernadetta is going to be hitting hard as an artillery unit from afar if you go down this particular path. Just hope that you don't get strength screwed. The second path will also have her end in Bow Knight, but instead of abusing huge ranges, we're going to have Bernadetta be a much more mobile character. While her tank stats don't really indicate that she wants to go down a cavalier path line, the main reason to even go through with this path is to pick up Desperation. In combination with Desperation, Brave Lance, and her crest, Bernadetta is going to be more than quadding foes, but the investment for this is going to be quite high, and the chances for her to hit for more than a quad is going to be rare, making this part a for fun path. But I do think this pathway is viable for Bernadetta, with her budding talent giving her pass plus and the cavalry class giving the much needed strength growth that Bernadetta desperately needs, this path is much more viable than I think people give it credit for. And finally, it's Noble into Soldier into Cavalier into Paladin ending in Falco Knight. Alternatively, if you don't like Bow Knights, then you can have her end in Falco Knight, but just know that Bernadetta doesn't really like swords and raising proficiencies to get into this masterclass is going to be a bit of a grind. As a side note, her personal weapon, a bow, the inexhaustible, is still good on Bernadetta, contrary to popular belief. It's a bow that quads, and the healing to get her out of the range of her personal skill doesn't matter when you quad and your crest has built in extra hits. So at that point, does the extra 5 attack really matter all that much? The next character is a personal favorite of mine, and it's Caspar, who has the personal ability Born Fighter. Adjacent foes suffer a void minus 10 during combat. Caspar also does not have a crest. There are two path lines that I think are worth consideration when using Caspar. The first is Noble into Fighter, into Brawler, into Grappler, ending in Warmaster. The second is the similar path also ending in Warmaster, but instead of going Brawler and Grappler, you go into Brigand, into Warrior, and then end in Warmaster. The Warmaster path is the most common and seems to be his canon class progression. More specifically, Caspar seems to come down from a Brawler class, and he's most commonly seen to punch people with fist weapons than using an axe, but either works well. The difference between the two classes are the Warrior class seems to give more strength additive bonuses, while the Grappler class seems to focus more on speed and dexterity. Casper naturally has a decent to good speed growth, so it depends on how you want to use Casper to shape out in the long run. I personally dipped into both before ending in Warmaster, and Casper turned out fantastic regardless, so it really is no worries which class you pick up or dip into. There are skill differences however, and I do think Wrath is a better pickup than the unarmed combat, so that's another thing that you can consider if you're struggling as to where you could stick Caspar. If Warmaster isn't your thing, then Caspar can make a great Wyvern Lord. His class progression would look like this. Noble into Fighter into Brigand into Wyvern Knight, and finally ending in Wyvern Lord. The benefits of going down the Wyvern Lord class is that it makes use of Caspar's axe proficiency and it gets him huge movement, being a flyer that isn't restricted to a lot of the tiles. However, because he's neutral in both lances and flying, it will be a little slower than going down the Warmaster path, but it is worth consideration if you want more movement. And a fourth option, which is a niche and not recommended path, is ending in Great Knight. The other route and the final is just somehow ending in the Great Knight class, but I recommend against this as there are better candidates for this class in the same house. If you want movement, just turn him into a Wyvern Lord. The next character we're going to be talking about is a fan favorite, Dorothea, whose personal ability is Songstress. Adjacent allies recover up to 10% of max HP at the start of each turn. 
Dorothea does not have a crest. There are two class progressions that are worth consideration on Dorothea. The first is commoner, into monk, into mage, into warlock, and finally into gramary. The second one is commoner, into monk, into mage, into warlock, and finally ending in mortal savant. Having a high charm stat to make use of battalions, plus having a good magic stat slash speed stat, Dorothea is going to be another mage that's on your squadron. While admittedly she will perform in the long run of things poorer in comparison to Hubert, she can offer a lot of utility for your team. By having a budding talent in Faith, she can not only be your secondary mage, but your secondary healer. But with this being said, there is actually a better class for Dorothea if you can manage to get the event. And that class is Dancer. The Dancer class is going to be Dorothea's best class, and realistically, your class progression is going to look something like this, starting with Commoner, into Monk, into Mage, into Warlock, and then going into Dancer. With a personal ability that's basically a repeat of Azura's personal skill in Fates, it's a no-brainer that you turn her into a Dancer. By having access to Reason Magic, and by extension Faith Magic, which Dorothea has a budding talent in, you can make her a Dancer that can hit from afar with Meteor, heal with Physics, and that can also refresh her other units. She can be your ultimate support unit if you build her correctly. Moving on, we have Ferdinand, whose personal ability is Confidence, grants hit slash avoid plus 15 when unit is at full HP. Ferdinand also has the minor crest of Keyhole, which allows combat arts to sometimes prevent enemy counterattacks. There are two class progression lines that I think most people will take Ferdinand down into. The first is Noble into Soldier, into Cavalier, into Paladin, and finally ending in Great Knight. The second one will also end in Great Knight, but instead of going down Cavalier and Paladin, you take use of his budding talents in Armor Knight and Fortress Knight. From my understanding, Ferdinand is one of those characters that have a slow start, but end up becoming fantastic with the additive bonuses as time goes on. There are two paths that Ferdinand can take to end up in the Great Knight class, but the bonuses that both provide are vastly different from one another. By going down the Cavalier class, you can make use of Ferdinand's great speed growth and by extension, desperation. But I understand that you want to have Ferdinand be useful immediately right off the bat if you can. Therefore, you can turn him into an Armor Knight by taking use of his budding talent. So if he's not dealing damage, at least hopefully, theoretically, he'll be taking none. Great Knights, at the end of the day, want axes, armor, and riding, so either one of these two paths can take you there, though a little bit of planning is advised. The next class that's worth consideration is Noble into Myrmidon into Mercenary and finally ending in Hero slash Swordmaster. Another class that goes under the radar for Ferdinand is the Hero and Swordmaster class. They both make use of his proficiencies in Sword and further capitalize on adding bonuses towards his speed stat, plus 10% for Hero and plus 20% for Swordmaster. However, if you do go down this route, you won't really end up in a great master class, as Mortal Savant is kind of wasted on Ferdinand, as he won't have good magic stats to make use of the reason magic bonus that you get from this class. It's probably best to switch around between Hero and Swordmaster for their skills, and if you do end up finishing with both, then swapping to Assassin isn't a bad thing to consider at all. Do keep in mind that Ferdinand's weapon later on is a A rank lance and a shield. While the shield isn't a big deal, anyone can equip that, the lance is going to be not usable if this is your class progression. And finally, you have Noble into Soldier into Cavalier into Paladin and finally ending in Bow Knight. Another master class that Ferdinand can go into is the Bow Knight class. While it won't make use of his proficiencies and budding talent as well as the Great Knight class, it's a class that can add more range onto Ferdinand if that's what you desire. It is a little bit more of a grind admittedly because getting the bow ranked to A is kind of a pain, but if you stick with Cavalier and Lances throughout your class progression, you can focus on raising bow proficiencies during instruction periods and goals. This is the least recommended class however. The next character we're going to be talking about is Linhart, whose personal ability is Catnap. If unit takes no action except weight, recovers up to 10% of max HP. He also has the minor crest of Cethelian, which sometimes raises might when using recovery magic. The class progression line that I think most people will take Linhart down into is Noble, into Monk, into Priest, into Bishop, and finally into Holy Knight. Faith magic users are important to every route even if you only have one. They skill so ridiculously well into the later parts of the game. 
Linard having a proficiency in faith magic makes him the obvious healer of the group as you don't have to grind faith through Hubert or push through Dorothea's dislike until she gets a budding talent for it. He gets access to a fast physics, and since ranges tend to get bigger with each of the faith proficiency classes, Linhardt being your healer of the group is going to be what most players will do and what I personally recommend that you do. While you will have to level lances and writing on the side, having access to reason magic if you're leveling it on the side can help Linhardt if you're ever in a pinch and you can focus on lances and writing for instructions and goals in preparation for the late game. Since Linhardt shares a crest with someone else, his holy weapon, a staff, will be in competition with that said someone else. So if you make him a healer, he'll be competing for the staff, but it's most recommended that you keep it on Linhardt for better physics. But maybe we don't like healers, we want to go down an all offensive class, then Linhardt can also be a great Dark Knight. There are two paths that you can take for him, starting with Noble, into Monk, into Mage, into Warlock, and finally ending in Dark Knight, or his third option, Noble, into Monk, into Dark Mage, into Dark Bishop, and finally ending in Dark Knight. Again, like the Holy Knight, you have to level lances and riding on the side, but that's hardly an issue. By dipping into Dark Magic and Dark Bishop for Dark Magic spells, you can have an access to a huge list of spells. Not to mention, if you got his faith to see, Linar can still use physics, making him a great secondary healer if you already have someone else as your primary healer. And the final character that we're going to be talking about is Petra, whose personal ability is Hunter's Boon, grants crit plus 20 when foe's HP is less than 50%. Petra also does not have a crest. Petra has quite a few options, but the first one, Noble, into Myrmidon, into Mercenary, into Swordmaster slash Assassin, will be kind of the most common class that I think most people will turn Petra into. And not to mention, Swordmaster seems to be her canon class. By going down into the Swordmaster slash Assassin route, you get access to a lot of neat things like Astra and Lethality through Class Mastery that can be added on as a option for the character. Having a high dexterity stat and speed stat, it only seems natural to do so. But if you are dead set on giving a master class for Petra, then Mortal Savant seems to be an option for her, though her dislike for reason magic could be quite a pain to level up. I personally think Petra is one of those characters that are best staying away from a master class unless you go down a flyer route, which I'll touch upon shortly. Her third option, Noble into Fighter, into Brigand, into Wyvern Knight, and finally ending in Wyvern Lord, is I think just as good as her Swordmaster slash Assassin route. Being a Wyvern Lord, you get a lot of movement and you can make use of both proficiencies in axes and flying. You can also consider going Soldier into Cavalier into Paladin if you want to pick up the class mastery skill of movement plus one, so Wyvern Lord Petra can reach higher heights if that's something that you're interested in. But just know that the class progression I put up originally is the path of least resistance if you're keeping Petra in a flyer class. Another route that I can see people taking down Petra down into is the Warrior class line, starting with Noble, into Fighter, into Brigand, and finally ending in Warrior, which could help get additive bonuses to her strength and getting Wrath as the class mastery skill. It's not bad class if you're getting strength screwed on Petra, though you'll be stuck using Axes for Axe Fair for the time being. So with that being said, here's a sample team that I think is worth consideration. Edelgard is a Armored Lord slash Empress that ends in Wyvern Lord. Hubert is a Dark Knight. Bernadetta is a Bow Knight. Caspar is a War Master. Dorothea is a Dancer or Gremory. Ferdinand is your Great Knight. Linhart is your Holy Knight. And Petra is your Wyvern Lord. With no Weapon Triangle, there's really no need to have a Sword Master on your squad. Getting access to Hand Axes and Javelins on most of your team is going to be really beneficial, but if you want a variety in weapons, then Petra being a Swordmaster or Assassin isn't a bad thing to consider at all. Especially since Edelgard's personal class is restricted in movement due to her being an armored character, you can afford to have more footlock characters on your team. Not to mention, Dancer Dorothea has one less movement than Cavs, so she can help patch up the slow moving characters on your team. If I had to bring other characters onto this team, I would pick up someone who could keep up with the high movement that this team can bring to the table. So someone like Leone isn't a bad pickup, and neither is Sylvain. While they don't bring anything unique to the table per se, being able to keep up will be a big deal for a sample team like this.
But with that being said, this has been JAIK, thanks for watching. If you're interested in the other houses, you can always check the description below. If you want more 3 houses content, consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching.